We are live. Jen is reading a book. It's a good book, though. It is a good book. <laughs> <laughs> Full of mystery and drama and whiskey. <laughs> Everybody, Everybody's watching. They're like, you know, Scott and Jen are probably, they're slamming down some drams and they're talking Weird. and having fun. And then we go live and you're reading a book. Before. I know. I'm sorry. I'm like <laughs> an old lady just over here with sipping my my wee dram and reading a book. <laughs> that was a good book. You had the you had the newest version of the uh, malt book. Yeah, I had the twenty twenty two. We were just looking some stuff up in. Yeah, I have. I I tell people, especially in like my onboarding sessions and stuff, like mm -hmm. I use these more than I did any textbook in college. Like oh, yeah. it is, they're dog eared, they're highlighted, they're circled, they're like dirty. The pages are just I I recommend this book a jillion times over for any whiskey enthusiast yep so great it's great cool. information in there all distilleries and just all kinds of facts and everything related to scotch whiskey 10 10 recommend yep yep <laughs> <laughs> so anyway why are, why are we here <laughs> <laughs> exactly Tell, tell me why we're here, Scott. So most people watching probably know every year in February, is it February 25th? I hate to get my date. January. Off. We're in January. Or January. January 25th. Yeah, see, boy, I really blew that one. It's because uh, all the whiskey we've been drinking before we went live. The <laughs> fact is, yeah, and here's a little. But uh, no, uh, famous Scottish poet, Robbie Burns, uh, each year, January 25th is kind of a celebration for Robbie uh, people have get togethers, whiskey tastings, they eat haggis, they wear kilts, they have bagpipes playing, they sing songs. The men make fun of the women, the women make fun of the men, and then everybody goes home happy. So this is the U.S. exclusive cask chosen for, for uh, Robbie Burns night this year. This is will be by lottery. Now, this is a little bit different for, for you and I, though, too, Jenna, because... This was actually the email went out on this one earlier today it did. Uh, with the details of it and everything and the link to click on to register to get this one. Uh, usually we've been doing the live streams before the announcement comes out, but we actually thought let's well, send out the announcement and then let's review it and look at it or preview it. And we'll put a link in the description, which is down there on the YouTube description for people to click on to go register their email for their chance to buy this bottle. Yeah, I kind of like it this way that like everybody knows what it is. So it's not like a surprise what we're tasting. Um, everybody, you know, if you got the email and read through, you know exactly what it is. Um, so I kind of like it this way. It's yeah. yeah, I'm 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 excited to to taste it this way. But, um, yeah, we don't you know, we don't have that big reveal. And uh, who somebody just asked is Scott reading. Um, so there it is, Joe. Kite, kitely, is that right? Are we getting some poetry reading from Scott tonight? No, Are no poetry, no singing. This isn't the the Burns <laughs> event. This is just a look at the Burns bottle. And you, so the lottery will be over, and, and people that get the opportunity to buy this bottle will have it in hand for Burns night. Yes. Yep. Which is exciting. Um, and I do want to quickly just make mention, George Kaplan asked, is the 2023 edition still only available from the UK? Um, and I believe it is, yes. That's where I ordered mine. Um, directly, you know, from the author. Um, but it got here pretty quick. I want to say it was here within a week. So um, I believe. Well, and I was just telling you, I ordered mine back in September when they announced it coming up and I've never received it. So I need to. Yours got lost. Yours got I need, lost. Yeah, I need to check on it and see <laughs> where's that. But, and I was telling Jen, the Scotch Test Dummies are actually mentioned in the 2023 Whiskey Yearbook. I'm going to like be sifting through the pages here looking for you, Scotty. I know you're in here somewhere. I just got to find you. <laughs> we're, we're BT big time right now. Big time you are. That's true. No, there's a, I got a, a Roy sent me a picture of the page, but uh, he goes into some this year for the first time, he goes into some social uh, media outlets that he pays attention to that he watches and that are worth watching. But he does, he does name, uh, he's got a lot of channels mentioned, uh, but then like 10 or 12 that he recommends watching in the Scotch Test Dummies are one of those channels. I mean, you've been, a, you guys have been like kind of a big deal for a long time. I remember when you invited me onto the channel, I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> are you drunk? <laughs> Why do you invite me? I didn't know anything about whiskey. Um, <laughs> you guys were so awesome. And you're just like, yeah, come and hang out. And 
I need to go back and watch that because that was probably what 2016, 2017, yeah, somewhere was, in that time frame. I think it was like 2016 ish. Um, I don't want to watch it because I'll probably watch it and be like, what was I saying? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Kitely says, uh, talking about the, the dummies in the whiskey dictionary there, it's under the YouTube channels to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> That too, yeah. <laughs> whiskey yearbook. I couldn't think. Yeah, whiskey malt whiskey yearbook, not whiskey. whiskey yes, yeah. malt malt whiskey yearbook. So good book. Anyway, shall we like just get into it? Yeah, shall we absolutely. Get into the whiskey. Um, I think I just opened mine freshly opened as of about maybe twenty minutes ago. Um, it's been poured in my glass for, I'd say what like, fifteen minutes maybe. Uh, uh, almost 30 now because it was right about 6 40. I, right. opened, I opened my bottle earlier today to let it get some air and then I, I did pour it in my glass right well right when you came in you heard me pouring it so I it's did. been sitting there for about 30 minutes now open all right so but yeah. I haven't tasted or anything at all yet and um you asked me you asked me right off the bat what I got on the nose and I said it's it's fresh ripe red berries <laughs> and a little sulfur it is a little sulfury. Yeah. Um, I agree with you, but I like that. Yeah. Like I think it it balances that like fresh fruitiness um, really nicely. And I had told Scott this, you know, when I was first nosing it, I almost got like a little A one like steak sauce oh, on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a little musty, funky like steak saucy, fresh fruity goodness. <laughs> Yeah, but no. Um, me the, the to me the sulfur adds. I, I like I like some sulfur, and I've had some heavily sulfured uh, sherried whiskeys in the past, and I I kind of dig them. I like. Yeah. It. I, uh -huh. I mean, just it can bring some uniqueness and some meatiness. Probably like your A one steak sauce. Yeah. You know, just kind of that. I don't know. Just adds a little character, a little punch, you know, a little funk, you know, to it. Yeah, I mean, any whiskey that is musty and dusty and funky, yeah. and that's like my jam. <laughs> so, okay, so we didn't go over cast 68.93. Oh. It's named <laughs> Supper in the Dunnage. It's a 14 year old Highland. This is a US exclusive cask, 200 and some bottles available. Like 270, I it's, think. Yeah, 56.5% ABV. This is 11 years ex bourbon hogshead and then three years in the first fill, shaved, toasted, and recharred PX barrique. Yeah. Um, and I will have to say that some people watching may not know what supper is. Where I grew up, supper is that's the nighttime meal. Dinner is served at noon. That's lunch. It was breakfast, dinner. Dinner was lunch? Nope. Breakfast, dinner, and supper. That was what that's that's the way I, I was I learned it. Yeah. So when you would have what we now call lunch, your like parents would be like, Scott, it's time for dinner. It's time and for it's dinner. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Until I got to college in the big city. And then people would say, you know, it'd be like five o'clock and people would, would ask, What do you want for dinner? I'd be thinking, that's tomorrow. Who cares about tomorrow? What are we eating for supper? <laughs> supper. <laughs> I think I think I had both. Like my, I remember my grandmother saying supper, um, but I think my parents were. It was just dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Warren Buff says dinner's the main meal of the day. Whichever. Oh gosh, he just jumped. Whichever time it's served. Hmm. I like that. Dinner is the nighttime meal. <laughs> That's yep. what she says. <laughs> And Joe says, uh, is sulfur a note that many might be unaware, agnostic to smelling? Is it divisive? Just curious, because I don't think I've ever got it when nosing a whiskey. It, it can be pretty divisive. Some people love it. Some people hate it. How would um, you describe it? Because I think when people like hear sulfur, they think, oh, my God, this whiskey says smell like rotten eggs. Um, it's like, well, it's, 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 it, to me, it's kind of like, well, it, it can be. Uh, yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah. Most most sulfurs is more kind of like a copper tin, um, almost like a rusty yeah. copper, rusty yeah. tin type note. Yeah, like the smell of like a rusty bucket. 
-hmm. like a wet, rusty bucket. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mark like Lambert a says that sulfur may be the single most divisive there is. No, I would disagree. I think peat is the most divisive note that there is. Some you either love it or you hate it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever had a whiskey that has smelled like rotten eggs. Um, at least not one that I can like remember. Um, and Ian asks, is it more black powder sulfur versus rotten egg? So this is this whiskey does not smell like rotten eggs for the record. No. There no. are no rotten it's eggs in this. Um, yeah. there's, there's just like a little, like, like you said, like a little rusty bucket yeah. in here. It's, it's not off putting. No, uh, no. And most, most time with scotch, it is, it's kind of that black powder sulfur firecrackers, uh, yeah. burnt matches, yeah. uh, Mark said. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, my or, uh, whiskey goodness said, uh, rusted bolts is what it reminds me of. Yeah. That's great description. But it's like, I don't know, it's this whiskey's like, I don't know, it makes me want to get in like a fast car and drive fast somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> JT says they use the term supper on the farm. Supper so. on the farm. Maybe I'll start using that. Supper's ready. I kind of like that. People will be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You can hear my kid now. What? What is that? <laughs> But I, still, I mean, I still like, I like red berries here, red, ripe red fruits and meaty, savory, sulfur. It is meaty. This is a meaty whiskey. I agree with you. But there is, like you said, like that fresh, just like red yeah. fruit, like undertone to this. Um, that's, that's refreshing, you know, against the the backbone of that sulfur and that kind of meatiness. So I'm almost getting to like a, like a roasty, a roasty kind of toasty note. Um, and that could be from that STR cask. Mm, yeah. Almost like a, uh, like if you could like liquefy, like some kind of toasted, sweet toasted nut. I just don't know which one it is, but that in like liquid form. I like honeysuckle on this too, on the nose. Ooh. Sweet. Yeah, there is like, there's a very bright, like you said, fresh mm -hmm. quality to the nose of this. All right, well, I'm going to taste it. Good. Cheers. Cheers. Multicasking says a lot of folks say Macallan has sulfur notes too. I don't know that I've had any uh, sulfur from Macallan. I think they do a pretty good job of not having sulfur, but plenty of other sherried whiskeys. Whoa. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't want to say mm, mm. yeah. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Ooh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> ooh, there's some there's the there's the little tag of that little savory, sulfury yep. right there on the tail end. Nice. Mm. Well, that adds a lot to me. That adds a lot of kind of depth, a lot of character to it, but I think kind of a an obvious double maturation here, and still, it's not a sherry bomb. There's some nice sherry oh. influence, but kind of obviously that 11 years in the ex bourbon hogshead, and then you know a shorter three year maturation in the ex in the STR PX barrique, and yeah, mm, nice nice fruits, sweetness, honeys, toasted everything, savory, meaty. salted meats um italian salted meats yeah and that hint of hint of sulfur on that back end was gorgeous yeah this reminds me of like supper and dessert all in one mm. um, like there is a savory quality to this like a meaty savory quality to this um but then like i get like fig and honey and 
um, there's almost like a candied orange, you know, like those, those orange, I think it's like orange peel that's like dipped in chocolate. Oh yeah. You have those, mm -hmm. that I'm getting like a lot of that, um, on the finish. Um, and I definitely get that little kind mm -hmm. of the sulfur on the end. So it like kind of acts as like a balancing tool to kind of balance out all of those flavors. Um, but yeah, that is, I don't find this to be overly sherried at all. I get more, like you said, that toasty, roasty, mm -hmm. meaty kind of quality. Mm -hmm. um, whereas it's not overly sherried to me. Yeah, Mark asking, aren't sherry cast sulfured sometimes for protection against souring during travel time? I don't know if it's for souring. Um, sometimes they do it to clean them as well. Like when they're done with the sherry maturation, they'll come in with the sul the candles, uh, mm -hmm. burn it out, and add that. Sometimes adds that sulfur note. Yeah, well, it would be interesting to to know that about these particular casks. Like what happened to them before they were actually filled. Um, mm. something from that. Um, and George, yes, to answer it is a 700 milliliter bottle. This is mm -hmm. a 700, not a 750. Boy, I love the finish on this one. It really digs in. And, and <laughs> I, th I think it comes across as even a little bit older than 14 years because I mean, even sitting here, I'm still taste it's coming out, out of my gums. Nice brown, brown sugar. Mm hmm caramelized brown sugars, a little syrupy. Wow. I want to make like a boozy hot chocolate with this whiskey. Yeah. I think this would taste so good in like a hot chocolate. Ooh. Yeah, I'm almost getting like chocolate covered cherries. Yeah. Those Ooh. orange peels dipped in chocolate. Um, now that I've gone back and taken a few sips of it, I'm getting more of that like kind of sweet side, less of that savory side, but I'm still getting that little whisper of sulfur on the finish for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, all, it's really nice. Yeah. Really, really, really nice whiskey. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. De I mean, and definitely, I think it's been a while since I've had any sulfur uh, and, and, you know, with our deep rich and dried fruits or any of our sherried, I'm trying to remember the last one. Had some 44s, but I don't recall them being right sulfury or mm -hmm. overly yeah. sulfured, however you would describe that. Um, yeah, I, I can't recall a whiskey in recent memory that I got that note on either. <laughs> this would this will be a great bottle if you haven't ha if, if you don't know if you've had sulfur or you don't know if you like it or you want to see what it is because there's just a little hint of it. There's a little tinge of it in here on this one. And like I say, I really, I love it. I'm digging yeah, this one. I'm with it's, you. Yeah. It, it, it's adding a lot of character, just a lot of dark, rich, funky. Fruit. Funk. <laughs> I was, was going to say blue cheese. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay. So I said salted meats, your Italian meats. Think, think charcuterie board now with some, yeah. some blue cheese on it, those salted meats. This would meat. be very nicely with a... uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I, I like the complexity of both the nose and palate on this. And, you know, like you said, it's not overly sherry. It doesn't take over. It doesn't like mask all the flavors that were built up in that, you know, ex-bourbon hog's head. It's, it's really... This is a really nice whiskey. Yeah. Really lovely, lovely whiskey. Mm. That's going to add water. I am mm. not. <laughs> yep. I always got to add, add my two rounds. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is, and I'm still sticking. This feels much older. I mean, this feels like a 18, 19, 20 year old whiskey on the palate. It's so rich. Yep. yep. And sweet. Just the finish that clings on. Ooh. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, a lot of my, a lot of times, you know, on a blind tasting, even older whiskeys, you can tell they just, that finish just goes on and on and on. And in your, you can run your tongue along your gums and your teeth. And and it's happening here where you do that. And it's, it continues to pull that whiskey out. There is like a, a nice little, now that I've, I've tasted it a couple of times, there is like a nice little, like a, 
sooty note, like ashy, sooty kind of note on the finish too. And that could be that sulfur that like burnt matches mm -hmm. uh, kind of note, but there is definitely a little sooty, ashy, like dance happening on my palate. Tim Ottinger says, mention sulfur once in passing and it's all anyone hears. I want to hear more about the red fruits. <laughs> yeah, um, berries. Uh, I like the chocolate covered cherries, but I'm going with like a dark chocolate on them. I don't know if you were thinking milk chocolate, but I'd say it's more like a little yeah, bit of bitter like dark chocolate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, nice, nice berries, but brown sugars and kind of that PX syrupy sweetness. You know, it's you know, a little bit of molasses. Ooh. Yeah, cherries and berries, really. I mean, this is really, there's a lot going on with this one. Uh, sometimes you may just get, you know, a whole lot of berries, but you're getting those, those brown sugars, you're getting the syrupy, you're getting the fruits, you're getting the honeyed toastedness, the sulfur, meatiness. Yeah, definitely cheeses, meaty. Cheeses. Mm. And it's, it's too, like... Kind of talking about texture and mouthfeel, it is a little waxy. There is a little waxiness to this, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, but now that it's like it's like sticking to the top of my palate, yeah. Uh, so definitely like a little waxy thing. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm getting waxy. What kind of like maybe a crayon? No, more like a. No, Maybe. I don't know. It's like, mm. I'm trying to think of, I'm not eating a lot of wax in my day. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe like a, a beeswax kind of, mm. there is like a sweetness to it, but um, yeah, it's like a little gritty, like a honeycomb. Like have you ever eaten a honeycomb? Like a mm -hmm. chunk of honeycomb? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little gritty, little yeah. waxy, little little sticky, little sweet. Um, so that's what I would say. Wow. Well, and that's kind of what I thought with that charcuterie board is really kind of a combination of those salted yeah. meats, the cheeses, and even look, sometimes like you get a little piece of honeycomb, you know, raw honeycomb on there. The nose on this though has evolved so much since it has been in my glass. Like when I first poured it, I was like, it was really intense for me. Um, but now that I've like kept my nose in it, it's, it's really evolved into something just really just like luxurious and beautiful. <laughs> I hate to mention top five whiskeys of the year since we're in <laughs> January, but. Oh, snap. This will, yeah, this will be a contender for oh, that. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Only tasted yeah. one whiskey this year. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, first whiskey of the year. It's a top five. <laughs> <laughs> come back in december right there's a, there's a good chance you'll see this one in my list i'm trying to think mm. what did we do for uh, i want to say i have our other burns bottle from a couple years ago but i uh, know i can't find somewhere in that menagerie um yeah. I don't remember what the last couple were. They're tucked in there somewhere. Oh, wait. Found one. <laughs> uh, this was a 112.73. This is from 2021. So two years ago? Huh. Yeah. I don't remember what we had last year. It seemed like yeah, it was spicy and sweet, though. I think it was, actually. Oh, yeah. Lady Lady <laughs> K is on it. She says, harvest hayride happiness. That was last year. Know. There you go. Yep. That was, yeah, that was last year. So this was two years ago. Oh my huh. gosh! I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get in mm. there. Man, that's. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share this with my husband later. Kinda I'm gonna put this bottle back. And hide it. And mm -hmm. Hide it. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. I got. I just put added a second drop here. Haven't tasted it with my second round of water. First round didn't really. It was. I, th I think it was actually a little bit better neat with that. Yeah. That first round. 
Yeah, I think I think the ABV on this too is like in that sweet spot. I think that 55, 56, 57 ish ABV is that's what I've kind of been gravitating toward as of late. Um, I think that's kind of like that sweet spot for a lot of whiskeys. And I think this is pretty spot on when it comes to ABV. Wow. Mm. I don't think I've ever swished whiskey like that. <laughs> let me let me try that. Really? I don't like I I I don't my husband does it when he he drinks whiskey but I don't okay I'm gonna try it <laughs> I spit this out all over my yeah, camera. make sure you have a, just a little just get your that little sip in there but yeah we'll all be witness to it swish it around and get it all soaked into that gum the gums and stuff two rounds of water here nothing really else is showing itself it's still good it's very expanding um I would say on the palate but it's still. All those same notes. I'm not getting anything different. You know, do you swish it like mouthwash? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I can taste this one. Okay. I mean, that's like I've never, I've never swished. I don't think. Wow. Like that. Mm. Wow. It's more of the chocolate is showing itself now. It's uh, here. Yeah. Like it's sitting like in my jowls. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark I, would love to, I would love to know really quick for everyone who is here, watch, you know, watching. Do you guys swish? Do you all swish? Like it's mouthwash or like when I have a whiskey, I like put it in my mouth, but I just like move it across like my tongue and my palate, but I don't like swish it. I would love to know, do you all swish your whiskey? To swish or not to swish? Hmm. This is the question. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, mm. hmm. I, I hate to say gorgeous. I use gorgeous too much, but this is... <laughs> it's the it is a lovely whiskey, um, and I don't I don't really use lovely too often. Um, but this is just a I agree with you. It's like an exquisitely just lovely whiskey, not a swisher. Team Robbie, <laughs> Tim. So chew when you mean chew it, like swish it. <laughs> I like how it affects the aftertaste. Oh, good call, Jen. That's that's a good call. Kentucky Chew is the swish we do sometimes with bourbons and lower ABV singles. Yeah, I mean, but I like move it. I don't swish it. I like Lana's uh, description. Depends on the whiskey. Sometimes it's chewy. Sometimes it's swishy. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Mm. Mm. And George Kaplan says, swishing is okay now. What about glugging and knocking back? Definitely not. <laughs> SMWS whiskeys are not for swigging, glugging, or knocking back. But they are sometimes chewy or sometimes swishy. <laughs> mm. I love that. Tim says, definitely a swisher, nothing but net. <laughs> Oh, I love these answers. <laughs> well, apparently I got to practice swishing mm. with whiskey some more. Yep. Wow. Woo. I mean, it's still coated my gums and everything. Oh, right it's like I can still feel it in this part of my palate when I swished it. Like it's stuck there. Um, Is it good yeah. or bad? No, it's good. It's different. It's different from like just moving it around my palate. I felt like a lot of it finished on like the top of my palate. Whereas when you swish it, it like it's finishing like in, like I said, like the jowls of like my cheeks. Um, so definitely different. So yeah. The question, I am a US SMWS member. Can I order from the UK website for my family in London? What, what we have to do, you, you, technically, yes. What we have to do is the UK uh, has to verify your US membership through us, which they'll do. Once that happens, you'll have to call in. You would have to call the UK 
uh, SMWS chapter and place your order and have them ship it to your family. Yeah. So if you do want to do that, just send us an email. You can email us um, either Scott or myself, Scott at SMWSA.com or Jenna at SMWSA.com. Um, or you can, you know, send it to our, our regular inbox. Um, but we can send all that information over to the UK and then arrange for you all to connect and um, you can take care of it that way. Max Kruger, Max Kruger, shoot, I'm late. Can you guys start over? Absolutely. I'll start over with this one. <laughs> wow. Or actually, I won't because I want to save this one. This one, I'm going to save her. I mean, there's still a lot in there. We haven't even got through like, the, that was just the neck pour. Yeah. <laughs> Warren Buff says, I tried the swish with the 55 in my glass. Wow. That changes how the finish hits. Yep. Yeah, definitely. It definitely finishes a little different um, in doing it that way. Mark Broda from the Scotch Four Dummies watching. Happy New Year to all these beautiful Scotch loving folk, he says. Happy New Year to you, Mark. Lana says, Happy Mew Year, Mark Broda, and happy belated birthday. She's doing the, the cat Mew. Right, meow. Yeah. How many times can you say meow? Uh, <laughs> I think a uh, typo there from Lana. Happy New Year. I like New Year, though. <laughs> Mew? Did you say Mew? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back and like pouring a little bit extra into my glass. I mean, the, the nose on this is really beautiful. This is a nose. I know you said beautiful, mm. but... Mm. Um, I, I think this is one of those noses that you can really sit with for quite some time, really dig into, really pull a lot out um, on both, like you said, you know, sweet, sweet side, savory side. It's sweet, it's savory, it's meaty, it's chewy, it's swishy. Um, it's, it's all of those things. Co Cody says, I've had two SMWS memberships and just been paying both fees. That's, that's probably the easiest way to do it because you're set up into both systems, but you don't have to. Exactly. Cody, send us an email. Okay. <laughs> Please send us an email. <laughs> I mean, that, that that's the easiest in that you can just go to the website and order and have it shipped where you want it, but you don't have to do it that way. But yeah. Uh, otherwise it takes calling in by the phone or setting up a draft and, and doing it that way. So. Yeah. But email us. Lana says, typo, my bad, but let's go with it. Meow. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim asked, does swishing like that make your tongue go numb? Do you miss on, or do you miss flavors after? Does your tongue go numb when you swish like that? It was very hot. Um, yeah, but, well, your your tongue is should be exposed to the whiskey if you didn't swish. I mean, you're good, you should have it on your tongue. Yeah, but it was I think it really helps. I think it really helps though with the uh, kind of the circular breathing or even getting notes after because you've saturated, you know, more of your surface area with it. And so even if you breathe through your mouth or breathe through your nose, either way after that, it just really kind of, I think it helps pull some of those flavors or those notes out for you. Ty Whitaker is right. He says the way Scott's talking, he's going to be sad when this bottle is gone. Says, yeah, this is this is one I'll one another one of, and I may have it to is, just get to. It is very good, and many of you know, like the Dirtifs are like I'm hard to please when it comes to comes to a Dirtif, and this is definitely one that I would pull off and wow. and enjoy. And just like our that last seasonal, uh, the winter seasonal selection that we did. Mm -hmm. um, I love that whiskey too. And so I don't know if like my palate's just evolving and changing and being more, I don't know, open to, uh, you know, sherry cask matured whiskeys. Um, but this is, is beautiful and definitely one that, that I would pull off the shelf. Um, mm. I think it's cause it has that kind of funky, yeah, lusty kind of thing about it that I just really love about whiskey. So the whiskey Franco says I was sold as soon as I saw it was a 68. Yeah. This one and this one is different. I don't know if I've had a 68 with this. I mean, I, uh, up front before I, I, I told Jen, I said it's really on the nose. Almost felt like a 44, you know, distillery 44. Uh, sometimes those sulfur notes and stuff and whatnot. But and I don't know if I had if I've, if I've had that with the 68, that meaty, yeah. savory, sulfury note. Would, gorgeous. 
I would be interested to hear what Zach has to say about this whiskey um, because he's a massive 68, you know, fanboy. He loves this distillery. He has many, many, many bottles from this distillery. Uh, um, and so I'd be quite curious to see what he has to say. Um, I know he'll be tasting it in a couple weeks. Um, so I'll be definitely interested to hear what he has to say about this um, yeah. just because he's such a big fan of that distillery. Yeah. Um, Mark is asking what a Durdiff is, basically. Mm -hmm. That's that's the uh, abbreviation for deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profile. So that DRDF. We have more character limits now than we had a while back. And like when you look at the banner down there, cast 68.93, supper in the dunnage, 14-year highland, blah, 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 blah. It goes through all that. Used to be you only had like 90 characters. And so you had to kind of shorten up or abbreviate, make things shorter than what you could to get everything to fit. So I abbreviated deep, rich and dried fruits one time with DRDF and it became dirty. dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ooh. And Lana says the nose didn't sound appealing to her the least, but the tasting notes sound delicious. So I'm torn. Oh, it's, um, yeah. I mean, there's no torn. I mean it's, I think to keep in mind that Scott and I just opened these, like these are freshly opened. Um, and as you know, if you do have any cash strength whiskey on your shelf, that they do evolve over time. Um, and I can say just in it being in my glass, just for what the last now maybe hour, um, it's definitely evolved in, yeah. in both the nose and, you know, I just taste it again and on the palate. So yeah. Um, uh, Mamuka asking, does it have a lot of sulfur? It's not a lot, but I mean, it's, I mean, there's, I mean, it's definitely, it's noticeable. It's if you're sulfur sensitive or you don't like sulfur, it's probably not for you, but it, it's adding so much character to this and depth and meatiness and savoriness yeah. that uh, it's just delicious. Yeah, I agree. It is, it is fantastic to mm. say the least. And so the lottery for this is up and running. Um, and the link to this is in the description underneath. So if you want to just click that, it'll take you directly to the lottery where you can enter uh, for a chance to, you know, purchase this bottle. Um, and I believe the lottery ends on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, that's a good question. So uh, I would add though to you, do you, anybody that's watching, if you're not an SMWS Scotch Malt Whiskey Society member, you do have to be a member to purchase our whiskeys. There is a link if you're interested in becoming a member and you're not to click on, take you into our, you know, join page or how to become a member and what it entails. Uh, we have some bundles that are available in there as well. You can look at with some bottle bundles in the, in the membership or even a tasting kit, which is actually a really nice little uh, kit. It comes with three sample bottles, two of our classes, a water pitcher, little tasting book, notebook, and it's really neat. I just pulled out one of the notebooks. I'm like, I gotta use this. I gotta make some tasting notes in that. It's been sitting in the thing for too long, so I, I gotta do that. All right, well, I think we can wrap it up, Jenna, but yeah. Um, I just wanted to really quick just, look. I'm just looking to, to see exactly when the lottery ends. So yeah, okay. oh, actually, um, this, it looks like, and yeah, Monday. So it must be in by one o'clock PM Eastern time on Monday. Um, so if you are, you know, curious about this spot or want to have a chance to, to taste it, make sure you get your entries in, um, by one o'clock Eastern time on Monday. Yep. Max Kruger can confirm the tasting kit is fly. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, large woolly bugger is asking uh, when does the uh, when's the release January release come out next Monday? Jenna and I will take a look. We'll be back on Monday. Yep. Six, yeah. We got six uh, six bottles of the. It's a fairly large release, twelve to fifteen it bottles is. coming out. Actually, this the the whole month of January is actually quite exciting. Mm -hmm. I need to say, yep. um, and that's all I can say. I can say nothing more. <laughs> that's right yeah, it's an exciting month so yeah. Yeah. Scott and I will be back on Monday to taste through the January outturn mm. so come and hang out with us on, on Monday night 
And Chuck D, I see tuning in. I haven't seen Chuck D before, but he says, loving the SMWS membership. Cheers, y'all. Happy New Year. Thanks, Chuck. And I think we can wrap it up on that one. Yeah. Oh, wait, I don't have whiskey in my glass. I can't cheers you with an empty glass. I got, I got one swig left here. All right. I got to, I just poured as, a big one. <laughs> as we say, SMWS whiskeys are not for swigging, glugging, or knocking back. Please drink responsibly. Cheers. Cheers. See you all on Monday. And thanks to everybody that tuned in. <laughs>